everybody, yo, Mike here. Today we're gonna talk about a very, very important subject. Uh, it will start you off in Gen Chem 2. If you take Gen Chem 2, you need to know what is polar and what is not. And, and for this course, it's a very, very important subject as well. So let's talk about polarity. First, we'll talk about just a single bond, all right? So let's go and take uh, a bond between two similar atoms. And now what happens is we've talked about electronegativity. What really matters is if there's an electronegativity difference. So this is the hydrogen molecule H2. And you know what? I didn't draw a line between them. You know why? Because a bond really doesn't exist so much between atoms as it does around. All right, so we're going to draw uh, this what looks like an electron cloud. That's all electron. And actually, to be honest with you, if this was drawn to scale, this would be tremendously small and this would be very big. So most of the cloud is around the molecule. But you see, since you have the same electronegativity here, each hydrogen having 2.1 for a value of electronegativity, there is equal sharing in that bond, and we call this a non-polar bond. All right, now it's easy to show you what's more easy to show you what's nonpolar when we talk about what's polar. So now let's switch out that hydrogen and let's talk about what would happen now in that bond. <clears throat> now, this would be like two people in bed. Not like that. Like, you know, uh, sharing the covers, except one person is hogging the cover. So you got like this electron cloud that is not fairly shared. So what happens is the chlorine side, due to the higher electronegativity, that's the whole thing, folks. You gotta go look up the electronegativity, 3.0, 2.1. That difference in electronegativity is what causes this imbalance in the electron cloud, and you develop poles. Poles are differences in charges, so, so what happens is we use this little delta. Delta means partial, and if you ever had calculus, you know way too much about that. But you get a tiny positive, a negative charge, excuse me, over there, and positive. It's actually just less negative on the left and more negative on the right. And so these are poles. They're not full-blown positives like a sodium and, say, a, a chloride being a negative one. They are just slight charges, but that makes them more sticky at the molecular level, and it's a very important concept. So what we do is we call this polar, or other verbiage you might hear. We say this has a dipole moment, or we say that this has charge separation. Finally, you'll see this kind of arrow with a little line through it going from positive to negative. All those things mean that that is a polar bond and actually this is a polar molecule because the whole molecule has one bond. This is a polar nonpolar molecule because the only bond in that molecule has a nonpolar bond. So let's talk a little bit more about molecules and if a molecule is polar or not. One that has, say, several bonds. We we're talking about electronegativity difference. Anything greater than two, like between sodium and chlorine here, you're going to not have sharing at all. Anything greater than two, we're talking transfer, given and taken. And so this is gonna be sodium positive and, and chloride negative, and that's, that's not even in the same kind of ballpark as what we're talking about. If you have a difference of 0.5 to 1.9, and sometimes this, this is a different value. You might see it say 1.7 in other textbooks and stuff, but it's still in the neighborhood you're going to have 
a polar covalent bond with non-fair sharing, okay? So uh, you're gonna have this sort of charge separation here with partial positive, partial negative. And so that's gonna be a polar co covalent bond. The last example I used in this one, both have um, uh, the same atom, and so you'd have like an equally shared cloud with no charge separation, but it doesn't have to be the exact same atoms. It could be like a carbon and hydrogen, and that's still considered nonpolar because there's not enough difference in electronegativity. Okay, now let's talk about different molecules and whether the whole molecule is polar or not. Okay, so we've talked about what makes a bond ionic, polar, nonpolar. If we're gonna talk about a whole molecule, we've got polar bonds or not, but we also have to consider the geometry. Now look, if you're not an expert at geometry, go back and watch the geometry video again where we talk about Vesper and everything, because I'm gonna talk about it in passing here. Like for example, this guy, water. All right, now I alluded in the last video that that's very important that water is bent and that has an angle of 105 degrees. But let's take it and break it down, look at each bond, all right? First of all, we gotta go and look up the electronegativities. H, as we did in the last example, 2.1, O, 3.5. So you say, oh, okay, that's a polar bond. And then you say, who wins the tug of war for electrons? It would be oxygen between oxygen and hydrogen because of the higher electronegativity. And so you got this bent molecule where the oxygen's sort of hogging the electron cloud and that would cause a partial negative charge towards the, it's always the element with the higher electronegativity. And this is the partial positive side. Now, if you can draw a line separating positive and negative. Now if I go up and down, you know, like if I draw and cut this thing in half, the left side isn't more negative than the right side, so that's not charge separation. But if I do go and cut this thing in half from, you know, top to bottom, I can separate positive and negative, and that is a polar molecule. We'll talk about at the end why that's important. It's extremely important. This makes hydrogens stick to oxygens even when they're not part of the same molecule. So think about this, just use your imagination. Other water molecule comes up next to this water molecule and the hydrogens wanna stick to the oxygens because of the opposites attract sort of characteristics of that. That's coulombic attraction. We also call it hydrogen bonding. And once again, that's where we'll start Gen Chem 2. All right? Now, this guy's bent, but it doesn't have any polar bonds. So there's no way for it to be polar. There's no way for anything to be polar if it doesn't have polar bonds. So therefore, that molecule is nonpolar. So one would go to think that if it has polar bonds, it's gonna be polar every time, right? Nope. Check out this next example. All right, guys, here's CO2. We talked about its Lewis structure. Let's go look up electronegativity values. Carbon, 2.5. Oxygen, 3.5. So those are, that's a polar bond. Oxygen wins the tug of war for electron cloud to each side. Now, can you cut it in half any way and separate positive and negative? I'll wait. If you answered no, you're right. That has polar bonds, but is a nonpolar molecule because if I slice it down the middle, left to right, equal negative on each side. If I, you know, go slice it this way, uh, top, bottom, it's linear. So this is a nonpolar molecule. So 
What's the big deal? Well, it turns out that there's a couple really, really important characteristics of things which are polar and which are nonpolar. So let's compare nonpolar and polar molecules. Polar molecules have higher boiling points. Nonpolar, lower boiling points. What's that mean? Carbon dioxide is a gas at room temperature. Water's a liquid. So uh, that's due to the fact that there's more intermolecular attractions. All right. Uh, speaking of water, there's a little saying. Like dissolves like. All right. So polar dissolves polar and nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. So what's going to dissolve in water? Things with polar bonds. Uh, take a look at a sugar molecule. There's OH bonds all over the thing. That's one reason it dissolves, even though the backbone of it's just carbon-carbon bonds. If you put enough OHs on something, it dissolves well. If you take a look at something like a hydrocarbon, like gasoline, gasoline does not dissolve in water well at all because it's just carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. And a carbon-hydrogen bond has an electronegativity difference of 0.4, not greater than 0.5. So this is why this is important, folks. Uh, so, you know, keep that in the back crevices of your mind for later because it's going to come back up as you go along with your science path uh, in life. So, uh, so let's go and recap everything. And I mean everything. Okay, so at first there was a big explosion. No, I'm not going to go back that far. Let's, let's recap everything, though. I dreamed up this molecule, uh, SF2, as an example. We're going to go through Lewis structure, formula, Lewis structure, geometry, polarity. All right? Cool. Who goes in the center? Well, we need electronegativity values. Let's go and store that away for later. 2.5. 4.0. Hey, spoiler alert, that thing's going to be polar. Well, maybe. Depends on the geometry. Ooh, it's got a polar bonds is what I should have said. Sulfur. Uh, now we're going to add up valence electrons. Sulfur goes in the middle. Sulfur contributes six valence electrons. All right, going to go a little fast here. You guys are experts, though. 14 electrons. We're playing with a total of 20 valence electrons. So 20 valence electrons. Situate them in space here. Find out if we can distribute them. Got to use up two bonds. That's going to cost you four electrons, leaving behind 16. 16 electrons can distribute themselves. There goes six, 12, and 16. Now we're going to talk geometry. Electron domain geometry is four domains. 10-tetrahedral. Whoops. Molecular geometry. is going to be bent. So this is actually going to be kind of like uh, the water molecule. It's going to, uh, and by the way, you know, that's in the same group as oxygen. This bonds like hydrogens do. So you see, once you've done enough Lewis structures, you've kind of done them all. So let's draw what this looks like, say, in space here. It's going to be Electron pair, let's make those going in and out of the paper. And then we look at it, it's actually going to be opposite that of a water molecule. It's fluorines are going to win the tug of war for electrons. This is going to be the negative side. It's going to be the positive side. Can I bust it in half somewhere and separate positive from negative? Not, you know, left to right, but yeah, up, down. 
You can. It's got a positive side and a negative side. That's poles that have formed there. And this is a polar molecule. It's not, it's kind of an obscure molecule, but still it's polar. You now know about everything you need to know about polarity, and it's an important important subject. You go to biology. They'll call it hydrogen bonding. What makes your DNA not unzip? Uh, you know, why is your DNA hold together? Because hydrogen bonding, polar forces. It's embarrassing when your DNA unzips, especially in public. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I will catch you guys later and be safe, stay healthy, and um, see ya.